The movie begins by showing Cord Industries leader, Victoria Cord. She arrives in the snowy middle to meet a lieutenant named Carapax. Her visit there is to see the progress of excavating an object she has been searching for for 15 years, called the Scarab, an alien creature with great power. One of these creatures fell to Earth centuries ago, and if a chosen person wears the Scarab, they will be granted immense power. We switch to Palmera City. There, we will focus on Jaime Reyes, a Latin teenager who has just graduated college. His family welcomes him at the airport. There's his mother, Rocia Reyes, his father, named Alberto Reyes, his grandmother, named Nana, his sister, named Milagro Reyes, and there is also his uncle, named Rudy Reyes. While eating, Jaime was shocked to learn that his family was losing their home because the cord company was raising the land rent. Moreover, his father had suffered a heart attack and their car workshop had gone bankrupt. Alberto assured that they would be able to get through this difficulty because they are the Reyes family. I had a heart attack. What? I'm fine. Jaime and Milagro often sat on the roof, looking at the cityscape at night. Jaime told his younger sister that they would indeed escape poverty, especially since Jaime had graduated from college and he was going to look for a job. Again, we see Jaime and Milagro, who could only find jobs as cleaners at a mansion owned by Cord Industries. By chance, Victoria Cord arrived at the place, and we got trained with Victoria's niece, Jenny Cord. Jenny herself is the daughter of Ted Cord, the company's previous owner before Victoria. Jenny was angry with Victoria because she unilaterally started a project for a high-level combat suit named OMAC. Jenny knew that if her father were here, he would never allow such a project to happen because Cord Industries should not be making combat weapons. However, Victoria insisted that she was the one in charge now. During their dispute, suddenly Jaime lit up. Moreover, Milagro was caught using the toilet in the house and they ended up being fired. While waiting for Uber, Jenny thanked Jaime for trying to defend her. As a reward, Jenny told Jaime to come to the Cord Industries building the next day to get a job. At home, unable to sleep, Jaime met his father, who was relaxing outside. They had a conversation, which essentially was Alberto saying that everyone must have a purpose in life. It's just that Jaime had not yet found his. The next day, Jaime arrived at the Cord Industries building accompanied by his entire family, which was embarrassing, but that's family. Surely orphans and children from broken homes wouldn't understand this. Upon entering, Jaime was asked to wait. Meanwhile, we see Jenny, who secretly sneaks into the laboratory and finds the scarab, which Victoria has successfully obtained. Jenny carries the scarab in a burger box, but before she can escape, Dr. Sanchez, the head of the lab, notices and orders the building to be locked down due to a thief. By chance, Jenny runs into Jaime and asks him to smuggle out the burger box. At home, curious Jaime opens the box, but neither of them knows what the object inside is. Unexpectedly, the scarab chooses Jaime as its host, granting him superpowers. The scarab, named Kajida, integrates into Jaime's body. Before this, Kajida conducts a system check. First, it takes Jaime flying to outer space. Oh man, I'm in space! Oh. This is followed by sudden braking, and then by a test of flying acceleration, which naturally causes Jaime to panic, since he has no idea what is happening. Interestingly, Kajida will protect its host from any threats that arise, such as from buses and attacks from a furious girlfriend. Jaime's family is understandably panicked because their child does not return. Eventually, Jaime arrives home safely the next day. Jaime wakes up from fainting and is shocked to see the scarab attached to his body. The only way to rectify the situation is for Jaime to seek out Jenny because she is the one who gave him the object. Jaime went to the city to look for Jenny. Separately, Jenny, who happened to be pursued by the forces of Cord Industries, 
forced Jaime to help Jenny escape. Jaime took Jenny to his house. Rudy was angry because his car was severely damaged from being shot at. Somehow, merging with him, Jenny explained that the object was called a scarab, and it seemed that the scarab had chosen Jaime as its host. To remove the scarab from Jaime's body, they had to go to the Cord Mansion. However, the key to the mansion was in the Cord Industries building, which required them to break in. Victoria ordered Lieutenant Carapax to search for the fleeing Jenny. Uncle Rudy, who was indeed interested in the signal blocking technology he had developed long ago, used the device so that all the company's communication devices stopped working. Jenny and Jaime went to look for the key, and they found it. While breaking in, Jenny told about Korg Industries, which used to belong to her father, Ted Korg. However, since he disappeared, Victoria Korg took over the company. On their journey, they encountered Lieutenant Carapax, who attacked them, leading to a battle. Carapax wore an OMAC military suit, while Jaime was confused about using the power of Kajida. Due to Jaime's inexperience, Kajida took control and fought back. Permission to take over host. Watch and learn, Jaime. However, when it wanted to kill, Jaime prohibited Kajida because killing was not what they did. As a result, Jaime was severely beaten by Carapax, but fortunately, Uncle Rudy hit Carapax with a vehicle. Essentially, Jaime can use the power of Kajida at will. Whatever Jaime imagines can be turned into a weapon by Kajida. However, Jaime, still innocent, naturally couldn't do much. They arrived at the Cord Mansion, where Jenny led them into a hidden room, surprising Rudy because Jenny's father, Ted Cord, was a Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle is a superhero of Palmera City, just like Batman, the hero of Gotham, and the Flash, the hero of Central City. The Scarab did not choose Ted Cord as its host. Instead, Ted, obsessed with the Scarab, created his own technology to become Blue Beetle. While cleaning up, Jaime saw his wounds healing by themselves. Afterward, Jaime and Jenny shared stories about their families. Jenny lived with her father and mother in this large house, yet she often felt lonely. Meanwhile, Jaime had a family that loved him very much. As they were about to kiss, Rudy informed that the device had once entered someone's body, and the scarab had merged into his body down to the cellular level. To release the scarab, Jaime would have to die first. The conclusion is that Jaime cannot remove it and must become the next Blue Beetle and a superhero, whether he likes it or not. While calming Jaime on the roof, they saw Victoria heading towards Jaime's house. True enough, Victoria brought many troops to search for Jaime, while Jaime himself flew home in a very ridiculous manner. The Cord forces broke into the Reyes family home, finding the Reyes family hiding in a room. Fortunately, Jaime arrived just in time. He incapacitated all the forces with his device, but Jaime refused to kill them. Unfortunately, while trying to escape, Alberto and Milagro were caught by the forces and Alberto suffered a heart attack and died on the spot. Victoria Cord also caught Jaime, and the Reyes family home was completely burned down. Jaime was taken away by Carapax, leaving the Reyes family deeply saddened by Alberto's death. The next day, the grandmother gathered the Reyes family and said they must save Jaime, and that now was not the time to cry. Jenny took them all to Blue Beetle headquarters and planned to rescue Jaime using a Blue Beetle vehicle created by Ted Cord. On the other hand, Victoria succeeded in catching Jaime and the Scarab. Jenny revealed her father's weapon, and they selected several weapons to rescue Jaime. Anna? Hey, how do you know how to hold that so perfectly? They divided the tasks. Jenny and Milagro would enter the enemy fortress to look for Jaime, while Rudy, Rocio, and Grandmother would distract the enemy troops. Jaime himself woke up from unconsciousness and found himself trapped. Victoria planned to transfer the power of the Scarab to her OMAC military suit project. Rudy managed to break into the fortress. However, 
Due to the large number of enemy troops, they activated combat mode and slaughtered all the troops present. Victoria initiated her transfer process, but Dr. Sanchez warned that Jaime might die because of this process. Milagro and Jenny were shocked to see Victoria's OMAC project. Jaime, who was dying, suddenly entered his mind. He met his father, Alberto, who had been waiting for Jaime there. On the other hand, Jenny and Milagro had placed several bombs in the control room. Alberto said it wasn't Jaime's time to die yet and that Jaime must protect their family. And this is the purpose of Jaime's life. Victoria has successfully transferred the Scarab's powers to OMAC. Jaime has fully merged with Kajida. However, Kajida currently requires time to adapt. <laughs> and fortunately, Dr. Sanchez allows Jaime to leave to protect his family. Milagro and Jenny are separated due to the rubble. On the other hand, Jaime is pursued by many forces. However, fortunately, a grandmother wielding weapons appears, and it turns out she is experienced in warfare. According to certainly invalid information, this grandmother was once sent to destroy Hitler and the Nazi troops. Elsewhere, Jenny is caught by Victoria. Jaime manages to return to the plane, but realizes that Milagro and Jenny are still inside. Then, Jaime will return. However, before that, his mother encourages her son, along with Kajida, and tells them to unite. Thanks to the mother's prayers, Jaime succeeds in defeating the forces present and manages to rescue Milagro. While searching for Jenny, Jaime was attacked by Carapax, who wielded the power of the Omak armor. Subsequently, they engaged in battle. Jaime created a sword in the style of Devil May Cry. to fight against Carapax, which put Carapax on the defensive. However, Carapax was different this time from their first encounter. He was much stronger, which put Jaime on the defensive. Meanwhile, Uncle Rudy successfully diverts Carapax's attention. Seeing Uncle Rudy get shot made Jaime even angrier, and he attacked Carapax brutally. At the same time, Victoria took Jenny away in an airplane. However, unbeknownst to them, Jenny secretly chewed a bubblegum that could inflate. Jaime really wanted to kill Carapax, but he was stopped by Kajida, who said that we are not killers. Kajida finally showed Carapax's memories that he had obtained during the transfer. Carapax was once a child victim of war who was found by Victoria, and his parents were killed by Victoria. Victoria erased Carapax's memory and made him her assistant. It turns out that because Rudy survived, Jaime eventually forgave Carapax and said, Family makes us all strong. Carapax, now fully conscious, finally orders Jaime to leave the place. He plans to sacrifice himself by detonating the location to ensure that Omak can no longer be used, simultaneously seeking revenge on Victoria. Jaime successfully reunites with his family, and the scene is deeply touching as Jenny also joins in the embrace. Jenny now takes over the management of Cord Industries, and the Reyes family receives support from the entire city to rebuild their home. Jenny arrives there to replace Rudy's car, which was damaged in an incident a few days prior. Cord Industries will also assist in repairing their home. Afterward, the seeds of love between Jaime and Jenny begin to sprout, and they go on a date while flying. In the credit scene, we are taken back to Cord Mansion. There, we are surprised to find that Ted Cord is still alive and is sending out a signal asking for help. In the post credit scene, we hear Aquaman laughing as he watches this cartoon, and the film ends.